draft season is in full swing with L-Star events like the Reese's Senior Bowl in the rearview mirror as we go full speed ahead toward the forthcoming NFL Draft Combine. The Combine starts on February 26 and runs through March 4, as scouts and coaches remove their fine-tooth combs from their pockets and run them over prospects. The Combine will reveal a lot of movers and shakers as some prospects test off the charts and leap up draft boards, while others will see their stocks fall after subpar performances and will have to hope they can make up for it at their respective pro days. Far and away the most interesting storyline heading into the Combine week is Oklahoma Heisman winner Kyler Murray's decision to forego his contract with the MLB to focus his attention on playing quarterback in the NFL. It's a risky decision, but Murray stands to make much more, in the very least with endorsement contracts, as an NFL player regardless of draft position than he would playing minor league baseball for a couple of years. Murray is the draft's most polarizing prospect, with his measurables sure to have the attention of the football world at the Combine. He is widely expected to come in under six feet tall, which would already make him potentially the shortest quarterback to ever get selected in the first round of the draft since the AFL-NFL merger in 1970. Some think Murray will come in under 5 foot 10, which could cause his stock to plummet down draft boards as NFL teams worry his height would be a major detriment to playing quarterback. More, AAAF and XFL could threaten college football and amateurism regardless of what happens, I have a hard time believing that the Heisman winner will fall out of the first round no matter what. If he slips, which is a real possibility, some smart team will make a move at the end of the first round to secure his services. While Murray has the most intrigue at this point in the process, plenty of other talented prospects will be competing to lock in their spots as first-round picks, with others hoping to get noticed by a team or two to secure their position in the draft at all. Defense dominates the top of the draft, but there are plenty of talented offensive players, including some intriguing skill position guys, working their way up draft boards with two months left until the draft. Here's my current top 25 prospects ahead of the Combine. Page 2, photo by Grant Halverson, Getty Images, Delaware Safety Nasir Adderley is a player I expect to continue shooting up draft boards during the pre-draft process. Flying under the radar due to playing in the FCS, Adderley has been a revelation throughout the All-Star circuit, producing a strong showing throughout his week at the Senior Bowl in Mobile last month. For me, Adderley is the draft's premier safety prospect heading into the Combine, and I don't expect that to change during his time in Indianapolis. Adderley has the rangy athleticism and ball-hawking ability that NFL teams covet from safety prospects, particularly in the past happy day and age that we are currently in. Adderley showed his ball-hawking ability at the Senior Bowl, picking off a pass from Buffalo's Tyree Jackson in the fourth quarter to steal the North's win. One of the areas of concern for Adderley coming into the process was the fact that he mostly played deep safety during his time at Delaware, and was rarely asked to come up and make plays in the box or play man coverage in the passing game. He answered those questions emphatically in mobile, delivering thunderous hits in the box and acquitting himself nicely when matched up one-on-one -on -one with a receiver. Adderley feels like a more polished product than Alabama's Deontay Thompson or Mississippi State's Jonathan Abram, while also potentially possessing a higher ceiling than both as well. At this point, I feel confident in saying that Adderley will be a first-round pick in April, and I expect others to jump on board after he puts together an eye-opening performance at the Combine next week. After playing for John Gruden at the Senior Bowl, Adderley could be in play for one of the two late first-round picks in the Raiders' possession. Page 3, photo by Gregory Seamus, Getty Images, LSU's Devin White as the premier inside linebacker in this class, and I don't see any danger on the horizon for him losing that spot. Michigan's Devin Bush will be looking to hold off Alabama's Mac Wilson for the no. Two spot, however, hoping to hear his name called on the opening night of the draft. Bush is a similar player to White, they're both a bit undersized compared to your traditional run-thumping middle linebackers, but both represent the evolution of the game. 
teams are on the lookout now for more rangy, sideline-to-sideline -side linebackers who can hold up in coverage when matched up with a receiver or tight end instead of just the downhill run stoppers. Bush has the athleticism to do both while maintaining his ability to make plays against the run. Bush also has some intriguing ability as a pass rusher off the edge, and could be utilized as a situational pass rusher, putting his hand in the dirt and rushing the quarterback in the same way the Patriots move around Doan to Hightower. There's some concerns with Bush, however, that could make NFL teams pause before pulling the trigger. He's only 5'11 and doesn't possess the requisite arm length to shed blockers effectively. That was an area of weakness in college that will only get further exposed against NFL blockers. He does a good job of avoiding those blockers, however, using his quick feet and change of direction ability to slip them and make plays against ball carriers. In the right system, one that possesses a strong defensive line that will allow Bush to fly around and make plays along with taking advantage of his versatility as a pass rusher, the Michigan product should thrive. The Steelers at no. 20 would be a logical fit for Bush while the Patriots would certainly be happy to see him fall into their grasp at the end of the first round. Page 4, photo by Matthew Holst, Getty Images, Iowa tight end TJ. Hawkinson looks to be the top tight end in the 2019 draft, but his place in the first round is far from a foregone conclusion. With a deep crop of tight ends this year, it will be interesting to see if an NFL team rates Hawkinson that much higher than his Iowa teammate Noah Fant, Alabama's Irv Smith Jr., or even someone like Texas A. Hawkinson has drawn comparisons to Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski with his ability to impact the game as a blocker and a receiver. Hawkinson is versatile enough to play in a variety of schemes, possessing a strong ability to line up on the line of scrimmage or to split out wide. Hawkinson produced 760 yards and six touchdowns this past season at Iowa despite playing with a limited quarterback and an ultra-conservative offensive system. At 6'5", Hawkinson can be a nightmare matchup for defensive backs tasked with covering him. Combine his size with his soft hands and outstanding catch radius, and the Hawkeye looks like an immediate starter at the NFL level. There doesn't appear to be a discernible weakness in his tape, he figures to pay immediate dividends to whichever NFL team drafts him. He should be a first-round lock. I could see Hawkinson going as high as no. 8 to the Detroit Lions, with former Patriots assistant Matt Patricia buying into the Gronkowski hype and hoping the Iowa product can impact his team in the same way that Gronk impacted New England. That would probably be a reach, however, with a more likely landing spot being the Ravens or Texans at number 22 and no. 23 if he slips, the Patriots could view him as Gronk's replacement at the tail end of the first round. Page 5 Photo by Brett Deering, Getty Images, nicknamed Hollywood, the Oklahoma product has the type of game-breaking top-end speed that has NFL teams salivating. Coming off of back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons in Norman, Brown has the production to back up his athleticism. He benefited from playing with consecutive Heisman Trophy winners in Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, but on teams loaded with quality talent at receiver, Brown was the preferred target for both. Brown is a bit undersized at 5'10", but that's not likely to negatively affect his stock too much with plenty of undersized receivers, including his all-pro cousin Antonio Brown, producing at a high level in spite of their size. His height limitations can hurt him in contested situations, but you have to catch him first in order to provide that contest. Brown's initial burst and lateral quickness at the line of scrimmage is elite, putting defensive backs at an immediate disadvantage. He's the best deep target in this draft class, with his ability to get behind and take the top off of defenses with his vertical route running ability. He also has the vision and shiftiness to make plays in the open field after the catch. He could factor in as a punt returner at the next level as well. The Browns would make for an intriguing landing spot for the Oklahoma receiver, pairing him once again with former teammate Baker Mayfield. 
he would provide the deep threat to perfectly complement Cleveland's current group of receivers, potentially taking the offense to another level as the Browns look to make a playoff push in 2019. If Cleveland passes, there's plenty of other teams in the mid to late first round range who have needs at receiver, including the Ravens, Raiders, Colts, Packers, and Patriots. Next, 21. Dexter Lawrence Page 6, photo by Grant Halverson, Getty Images, Dexter Lawrence's suspension for testing positive for PEDs prior to the college football playoff shouldn't affect his draft stock. It looks to have been an honest mistake, with the blame falling further on the university than the player. Lawrence is an extremely powerful nose tackle who can eat up space and occupy multiple blockers, freeing up teammates to make plays against the runner to harass opposing quarterbacks. Calling him a mere space eater doesn't do his game justice, though, as Lawrence is surprisingly nimble despite his 340-pound frame. His bull rush ability allows him to pressure quarterbacks in the passing game, but he's unlikely to ever be a truly imposing pass rusher. His value is as a run stuffer, but I don't see him as merely a two-down player. He can close the pocket enough from the defensive interior to affect the quarterback, even if he isn't producing sacks. Lawrence's place in the first round will depend on schematic fit. He won't make sense for every system, but teams looking for a nose tackle to plug in as a day one starter will be intrigued by the mammoth Clemson product. He's mobile enough to play in a 4-3 alignment, but his best fit will be as a 3-4 nose tackle. The Browns and Vikings could make sense in the middle of the first round, with a pair of AFC West teams, the Chargers and Chiefs, licking their chops if he falls toward the end of day one. Page 7, photo by Brett Deering, Getty Images, Cody Ford headlined an Oklahoma offensive line that won the Joe Moore Award as the nation's top offensive line in 2018. Ford and company opened up holes for nearly two 1,000-yard running backs, while also allowing ample time for Kyler Murray to pick apart defenses en route to his Heisman winning season. In his toughest test of the season, Ford acquitted himself nicely against Alabama's defense in a losing effort in the Orange Bowl after a slow start. Ford's versatility to play tackle or guard, and do both at a high level, make him an intriguing prospect for NFL teams. He could probably contribute immediately at guard, but his long-term ceiling might be higher if he shifts to tackle. Ford plays with a mean streak and finishes off blocks impressively. He's adept at clearing paths in the running game and rarely loses his leverage against pass rushers on the outside. Ford has the athleticism to get off the line quickly and move to the second level in the running game to open up lanes for his backs. He moves incredibly well for his 330-pound frame, showing foot quickness of a player much smaller. Ford's ability to play multiple positions will undoubtedly see him selected in the first round of the draft. There's a lot of teams in need of help on the offensive line, and this class of linemen is quite deep. Ford could see his stock rise with a strong combine, and could end up being the first offensive lineman taken in the draft. His ceiling probably tops out at no. 7 to the Jaguars, with somewhere in the middle of the first round, the three picks wing between the Browns, Vikings, and Titans at 17-19 being likely, making the most sense. Page 8, photo by Lachlan Cunningham, Getty Images, Washington All-American Byron Murphy has the long-term upside that could see his stock soar between now and April's draft. With just one season as a full-time starter under his belt, Murphy was one of the nation's top cornerbacks as a redshirt sophomore, helping the Huskies win the Pac-12 and earn a berth in the Rose Bowl. Murphy has the upside to one day be an All-Pro in the NFL, and while his floor isn't as high as LSU's Greedy Williams or Georgia's DeAndre Baker, his ceiling might exceed both of the SEC defensive backs. Murphy has great feet and a quick change of direction ability to make him difficult to separate from. He also possesses strong closing speed, meaning he's never really out of a play even if it looks like a receiver has gained a step on him. He has terrific ball skills, showing an innate ability to locate the football in the air that is well beyond his years. 
Murphy is comfortable in man coverage and zone, while also showing a thump to deliver big hits to ball carriers. At number 19 on my board, I've probably undervalued the Washington product. He's a guy the first expect to explode at the Combine and at his pro day, potentially moving up as high as the top 10. He could ultimately challenge LSU's Greedy Williams for the top spot at his position. The Broncos at no. 10 could find Murphy's upside intriguing to go along with their need at the position. If they pass, it's hard to envision him falling past the Steelers at number 20 or the hometown Seahawks at no. 21. Page 9. Photo by Sam Greenwood. Getty Images. Florida's Jawan Taylor is another prospect on the rise who could challenge to be the draft's top offensive lineman. Oklahoma's Cody Ford and Alabama's Jonah Williams might project best as guards in the NFL, while Taylor is a no-doubt tackle. The league places a lot more value on tackles than guards, which could cause Taylor to continue shooting up draft boards between now and April. Taylor put together a strong junior season in Gainesville, helping the Gators leap from a 4-win 2017 to a 10-win 2018 that culminated in a Peach Bowl victory over Michigan. Taylor played right tackle at Florida and that's where he best projects in the NFL. He has strong hands, helping him be a dominant pass blocker. He has great size and excellent mobility. He has strong lateral mobility that helps him fend off speed rushers off the edge. If he can get his hands on you then it's all over. He has some technique stuff that needs to be cleaned up, most notably utilizing his leverage properly, but he has a high ceiling and projects to in the very least be a starting caliber tackle at the next level. Along with Ford, Taylor figures to be in play as high Jacksonville's pick at no. 7 Miami at number 13, Cleveland at number 17, and Minnesota at number 18 also make sense inside the top 20. It's difficult to see him slipping much further than that, but the Texans would end that slide at no. 23 of a player of his talent was still available. Next, 17. Christian Wilkins, page 10 Use your arrows to browse photo by Theron W. Henderson, Getty Images There may not be a prospect in this class with a higher floor than Clemson defensive tackle Christian Wilkins. Wilkins was essentially a pro playing in college this past season, eschewing an almost assured spot in the first round of the 2017 draft in order to come back to college to win a national championship. Wilkins was the emotional leader of a truly dominant defensive front, a defensive front that completely dominated Alabama in the national championship game, holding an explosive Crimson Tide defense scoreless for the game's final 40 minutes. Wilkins doesn't possess the prototypical length you would hope for as a defensive tackle, but he makes up for it with his relentless competitiveness and raw power. Wilkins fits best as a three-technique defensive tackle in a 4-3 scheme, but he's versatile enough to play nose in an odd man front as well if asked to do so. The concern with Wilkins is that he could be potentially maxed out as a player already. Does he have the long-term potential to warrant a high first-round selection, or will teams look at him as a finished product and fill their need of defensive tackle with another in a deep class at the position who they view as having a higher ceiling? I think that would be foolish thinking as Wilkins looks like far from a finished product to me. He has the obviously high floor to make an impact on day one in the NFL, but his potential far exceeds his current ability. Wilkins figures to find a spot in the mid to late first round. The Falcons at no. 14 could be intrigued enough to pull the trigger early, with his first round floor likely being with the Colts at no. 26. Use your arrows to browse.